did, did your dad see Easy Rider? Did your dad see The Hired Hand? Did he ever pass comment on your work? My dad saw Easy Rider and uh, had me come up to the house, to his house, and uh, he said, you know, son, I know you have all your eggs in this basket. And basically I did. I was tapped <laughs> after doing this. I was totally tapped out. And um, he said, but, you know, I just wish that you would let us know where you're going. I said, well, you know, Dennis is saying, I'm going down to Mardi Gras, I'm going to get me a Mardi Gras queen. Well, that's a little thin, son. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, Dad, why don't you just take the trip the way we do and discover this America? Why don't, you know, you did this great discovery of America in Grapes of Wrath. You know, you did all these wonderful films, uh, 12, Ang 12 Angry Men, and so just take the journey with us. I don't know, son, you're asking an awful lot from an audience in film. And I don't know if he was putting film down and going for stage because he was basically a stage actor or what. <laughs> Nevertheless, he thought it was unwise and that I didn't uh, make it accessible to the people. But you have to remember, uh, he was quite a bit older and belonged to a different class of society, different grouping, and he had no idea. He thought I was just really weird because I dressed like a hippie. <laughs> for him, it was dressing like a heavy. Forget about my real feelings about the things that were going on. Uh, and so he was not thrilled with the possibility that it may not work. Uh, my sister came to see it, and she brought her husband then, Vadim, Roger Vadim, Roger Vadim. and, and uh, Antonioni, Michelangelo Antonioni. I thought that was pretty far out. We're showing him a work print. This is butt end cut, nothing's smooth between it. The, uh, uh, the music is stopped like that. It doesn't fade out, fade in, none of that happens. And uh, Michelangelo had a tick in his shoulder. But, and sometimes it really get wild. Uh, and I was amazed that during the screening, he did not have his tick. It could, could have been perhaps because he came in with a yo-yo. This is far out. And it was one of those yo-yos that you, you fling it down and it lights up as it turns around, comes back. Like, oh, Dottore, he liked to be, Dottore, you know. Comandante was another title he loved. Dottore, per piacere, may I use the, the, the yo-yo? Yes, I want to try it. And it fell off my finger and cracked on the floor, <laughs> on the cement floor in this small screening room downstairs in Columbia. And afterwards, we all went for a drink someplace and as we were walking a bit, Jane said to me, I don't know, Peter, I, I, I just don't know. And at that moment, as we were stepping off one curve, looking down in the gutter, there was a $10 bill. I swear to God. And I said, wow. I turned down, picked it up. I said, well, Jane, this is the first $10 of the $10 million I make on this film. <laughs> she looked at me funny. Hello. <laughs> the, um, you, you, you did get to work with your, with your you, I think you worked with Jane uh, as well in a, in a sort of compendium. While, whilst easy. putting together Easy Rider, whilst writing it and refining it and doing all that, I was in the west coast of France in Roscoff. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing this kind of weird psychedelic film with, uh, with Roger Vadim and, and, and Jane. Yeah, it, it was a three-part movie. Vadim directed one, Louis Malle, and Fellini. And Terrence Stamp was in the Fellini Malle. I can't remember who was in the Louis Malle film, but it was a three-part thing called Spirits of the Dead. Mm. And ours was the most bizarre. <laughs> it was pretty. And even on Fellini's standard, it was the most bizarre. <laughs> and, but you did get to work with your father as well, uh, much later, it, when, in another film you directed called Wanda Nevada in 1979. 78, 79 is when it came out. Um, yes, I, I did get to direct him one day only. And it was an hysterical day, and we don't have time to go through it now. But uh, it was an amazing moment. And he wrote me a letter two weeks later. Uh, and it was probably the fourth letter he had written me in my life. And uh, he went on talking about how his beard looked terrible. And I told him, Dad, it's a fairy tale. It's, you know, it's, this is not a reality show. Uh, you know, I, I don't, don't blame me if you cut me out of the film. Though it would have been such a gas. His words, such a gas. So cool, huh? And at the end of the letter, he said, in my 41 years of making motion picture, I have never seen a director so devoted, uh, so de so in love by his crew. And you're a very good director, son. And I want you to remember, excuse me. 
I want you to remember me because I want to be a part of your company. Now, a company normally uses the term for stage work, but uh, in a good film, it is a company, and we all make the film. Uh, John Ford, for an example, had his group of, of character actors that he took with one film to the other, and none of us minded it, you know. Uh, and it was so sweet to be asked that from my dad. And you're a very good director, son. And I love you very much. Thank you. But I never would have gotten that letter had it not been from the crew. I took that letter in my mouth and crawled to each one of them <laughs> in tears, asking them to read the letter. <laughs>